All right. Um, thank you all again for joining us for our final keynote of the conference. Um, I think this one, as all of them have been, but I'm really excited to hear what our speaker has to say. You know, we've spent a lot of time the last day and a half, two days, talking about how to work collaboratively across boundaries, whether they're uh, physical, uh, country boundaries, organizational boundaries, um, and finding ways to do that sort of collaborative work to solve large systemic problems. And that is really what our next speaker is all about. Um, we talk about collaborations, we talk about partnerships, and sometimes they seem like they're a little bit of strange bedfellows. Because what's the connection between the world's largest environmental nonprofit and tech startups? How does that partnership work? And how does that collaboration work? And what are they doing to create uh, innovation and change? So Hannah Davis is our speaker. Hannah is the director of Techstars Sustainability Accelerator, and that is in partnership with uh, the Nature Conservancy. Sorry, my notes need to switch over. Um, Techstars is a worldwide network that supports entrepreneurs who are focused on solving challenges in water, food, and climate markets. And working, that makes sense that there would be a partnership with Nature Conservancy because that's right in their wheelhouse. Um, Hannah and her organization are committed to creating positive impact in the world through business. So it's a lovely combination of the collaboration between nonprofit technology and startup businesses that she's here to talk about us, talk with us about. Hannah, Great. thank you for being here. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here and really, really grateful for the invitation. Um, so today I'm going to try to talk for about you know, half an hour or less. I know it's me standing between lunch and I also want to give a chance for questions at the end. So um, the first time I heard the term ecosystem, I was in college and it was in reference to our natural ecosystems. You know, the, the clean air we have, how carbon storage works so we can um, breathe, and, 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 and healthy soils. And so at that time, I was taking Environmental Studies 101, and it just amazed me how our natural environment and how it worked together to create these systems. It wasn't just a forest system or a grassland system. You know, all of these systems were interacting together, um, and sometimes in really non-obvious ways. And that's how our business system networks work as well. They're all interconnected systems, as all of you in this room know. So I ended up double majoring in um, economics and environmental studies because I was fascinated by how both these systems, economics and our environment, did or did not work together um, and how we could look more holistically at them. So my, uh, my career path has um, been one of ecosystems of humans, though. So I helped start Impact Hub Boulder, which is a co-working community for social and environmental entrepreneurs. And then I went on to be the first employee at Merge Lane, which is an investment fund and accelerator for startups that have at least one female in leadership. And now I'm with Techstars, which I'll, I'll explain a bit about what Techstars does today. These powerful threads of these organizations are really bound together by their diverse networks and their intentional partnerships. And today I'm gonna kind of explore how Techstars partnerships are successful through the lens of how some partnerships are successful in nature. Um, but before that, I did wanna talk a little bit about Techstars tech because I know not everyone's familiar with what we do because it's very much um, around the startup ecosystem. Um, but it's an example of a worldwide network in the private sector that's based on partnerships communities, and scaling businesses successfully. Just out of curiosity, you know, is anyone in the room familiar with what Techstars does already? A couple hands, okay, great, great. That's good because I'm gonna talk to you about it, so I'm glad not too many people know. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna talk specifically a little bit about the partnership I work on, um, and then as I mentioned, lastly, just open it up to questions. So, Techstars is the worldwide network that helps entrepreneurs succeed. It was founded in 2006 by David Brown, David Cohen, Brad Feld, and our now governor of Colorado, Jared Polis. And they set out to solve a problem that they had experience with personally. 
how to create sec successful startups because it's really, really hard to do. And they had a hunch that it had to do with great mentorship, a strong founding team, and a strong network to support that team. And over 1,700 startups later, we can confidently say that their hunch was correct. Techstars is a network that connects founders, entrepreneurs, experts, mentors, alumni, investors, community leaders, and corporates to help partners grow their companies. Like a natural ecosystem, the Techstars network is an interconnected, living, growing system. What started with just mentorship-driven accelerators, which I'll explain a bit about what that means, expanded over the last 10 years because we saw that entrepreneurs need help from their idea to IPO to grow their companies. And so new products emerged to support the entrepreneurs during every step of their journey. Techstars operates in four main divisions. Our accelerator programs, our community programs, our corporate innovation programs, and our investment team. Our mentorship-driven accelerator programs, which is where my work is focused, help founders do more faster. They're three months intensive programs that surround the companies with everything they need to succeed. So this is world-class mentors, a curriculum on how to scale, access to resources, investors, capital, and a strong community to keep them going. We run 44 of these accelerators all around the world. They're either geography focused, so we have a Techstars Boulder, or they're partner theme focused, like the Techstars Sustainability Program I work in, which is actually in Denver, Colorado. 10 companies are selected each year out of hundreds of applications, and the accepted company receives up to $125,000 in funding, as well as all the benefits of our network and three month um, accelerator program. What we try to do is take two years of progress that the companies would make and have them uh, execute it in only three months. And it's been shown that this really works in kind of outside of the Techstars ecosystem, startups, only 10% of startups succeed, but the startups that go through Techstars, 87% of them are still active or have been acquired, which is a really remarkable number. The next part of what we do is our program. So that's Startup Weekend, Startup Digest, Startup Week. And these are community-legged um, uh, programs. So Startup Weekend is a 54-hour event where attendees learn to build a company in just a weekend. And this allows people to test out entrepreneurship, see if it's right for them. It gives them to, the chance to uh, join our network of entrepreneurs and, and take any business ideas they have to the next level. And we run this in over 160 countries all over the world. So there's over 200,000 people who have gone through these weekends. The next program um, is Startup Week, which is actually today is the last day of Startup Week Boulder. And it's a five-day, totally community-led event um, that also happens all over the world. And so this is all free events, workshop, lectures, panels, happy hours, everything. It's just all about bringing people together, learning about entrepreneurship, giving first to the community, and building startup ecosystems in different cities around the world. And then the last part of our community programs is Startup Digest, it is essentially a newsletter, but what's really neat about this is, again, it's all community run. There's no one from Techstars that's employed to send out these newsletters. Um, and they're all focused on how do we strengthen the ecosystem? How do we give back? How do we provide the knowledge people have? And so they're very um, carefully curated by the community. And these, again, are either focused on a geography, like what's everything going on in Washington, DC, or on a focus, what's everything you know in the social impact sector or the, you know, hardware, IOT, et cetera. And another pillar of what we do is our investment team. And this is um, a fund that has over 300 million under management, and it's to invest into our startups that have gone through any of our programs to help keep them going, help keep them living, and provide more resources to them. And these are a few of the uh, alumni that have been pretty successful from our programs. And then the last pillar is our corporate innovation pillar. So this is really, um, the benefits are for the entrepreneurs, but it's really focused on, we call them our corporate partners, but you know, the nature conservancy of partners, so it can also be nonprofits. We work with government, governments and cities as well. And these are in ways to engage partners 
in our network of entrepreneurs, investors, mentors, and community members. So that we really help brands supercharge their growth by accelerating innovation and cultural transformation. We help these corporations or governments, nonprofits, to see the future of technology through the lens of entrepreneurs. So we inject them with startup energy into their culture. It could look like expanding on M&A pipelines where that's relevant. Um, some of these specific programs that we run um, include our Techstar Studio, which is essentially we build startups from the ground up. So we bring in the team and the idea, and we incubate it right from the start. Or our ecosystem development, and this is where we go into cities that really want to build startup ecosystems and we help them think about how to do that. So we partner with the cities, we partner with large corporates within the cities, whoever's kind of key players, and then we assess uh, what's going on, create and execute a plan to help them grow their startup ecosystem. Uh, the next one is our network engagement program, and that connects corporations with the most promising startups that help them um, look into the future of where things are going in whatever sector they're in and really be on the cutting edge of innovation. And our sponsor sponsorships are just ways people can get involved with the network and kind of access this huge network of hundreds of thousands of people we've curated around the world. And then lastly, the accelerator programs, which I mentioned. So corporates, nonprofits come to us and say, hey, we want to run an accelerator in you know, focus in retail. You know, that's when we used to run with Target and so, because they understand they want to have everything I just mentioned around that injection of innovation. Um, and then lastly, we have a foundation and this is really to empower underrepresented communities and entrepreneurs to get access to the resources they need to help them grow their communities and businesses. So in, in summary, we've worked with over 1,700 startups from a, 173 programs. 85% um, of those are still active. We have 100, uh, over 65 corporate partners, 300 million under management, and are all over the world and growing. So it's a vast ecosystem, and, and we're doing a lot, as you can tell. And, and I kind of shared all that to show the complexity of one organization. Even though we work in technology and startups, we're really, what we are is this community, is this ecosystem. We found ways to have it be a circular loop where it keeps giving back to itself, and then in ways we can also monetize that and create products out of it. Um, and it's always evolving and always um, living and, and, and changing. And so, because I'm really passionate about nature and when I think of ecosystems, I think of our environment, I kind of wanted to give some examples of principles in nature that we see around partnerships and then examples of, of how I've seen those show up, show up in tech stars. And the founders, you know, this is all me, they didn't, they didn't like build this organization and say, let's, let's build this great organization based on natural ecosystems. Um, but regardless, uh, there's a lot going on there. And I, I wonder too, if you look into your organizations and your networks, what parallels you can see um, and what you can learn from nature. So if we develop businesses based on nature, you can develop businesses with sustainable growth, zero waste, and interconnected and efficient networks between customers, partners, and suppliers. So the first principle I wanna talk about is in nature we see a mutual benefit to different organizations that has reinforcing loops. Um, a great example of this, which you may be familiar with, is studies have shown that trees use their root systems and interconnecting fungi to feed each other and keep e weak trees alive. So why would, it, why would a strong tree want to give away its sugar and its food to these weak trees? And it's, they're very similar to elephant herds, actually, in that they care for their sick in a community. And so this is because actually, you know, if you think about it, a forest together can create a local consistent um, climate. It can um, you know, moderate extreme heat or cold, it can store water, it can generate humidity. But if too many trees within a forest are dying, that results in these large gaps in the tree canopy and it's easier for storms to come in and knock them down and, and they can't work as that, that natural ecosystem and network together in creating these ecosystem services they do. So that's kind of why trees look to um, support one another. There's this mutual benefit to each other in supporting each other. 
And at Techstars, that's really the core of what we do. So we believe more connected entrepreneurs are more successful entrepreneurs. And so an example of this, you know, I talked a lot about our mentorship-driven accelerators. It's important to know all of those mentors are volunteer. No one gets paid, and so why would these really, really successful people, I mean, many of them have sold companies for billions of dollars, or they're working on companies, um, and, and why would they give back to for-profit companies just for free, give, give their time? It's, a, it's significant time. Um, and that's really because there's mutual benefit to them. Not only do they get to feel valuable and, and add value to the companies, but they get to learn they stay current on what's going on. You know, in technology, things move really, really quickly. And if you're not at the forefront of it, you're behind. And so they get to kind of stay up to date through mentorship and, and understanding what's going on. They get to meet new people. They could attract talent for their companies. They could get hired on at, you know, the C-suite or into these companies. Or maybe, you know, they even want to start a company later and, and bring it through a program. Um, and then most of all, they become part of and get access to that huge network. Um, the next point I want to talk about is exchange of different resources or services. And what's important about this and what we see in nature is in, in nature, the strengths of one party are naturally matched to the weaknesses of others. So it's a very like, oh, I'm good at this, I'll do this, you're not good at this, kind of work together. Um, so an example of this is sea anemones and clownfish, also known as Finding Nemo. Um, the anemone provides them protection. So if they hide in there, they don't get stung, where if other animals go in there, they'll get stung by the anemones. And so, but then the fish naturally is cleaning them because they're hungry, but them eating the little um, algae and everything off the anemone is beneficial to them, both the fish, because they get to eat, and the an anemone because it stays clean. They also protect, um, the clownfish protect the anemone from other uh, predators. And so an example we see this in, in Techstars is um, kind of, I touched on it earlier, but corporations need innovation and disruption to be relevant. Um, today, 25% uh, of today's S&P 500 firms will fall off the index by 2028. And 60% of companies say it takes over a year or longer for them to create new products within their company. And almost a quarter of those say, say it takes over two years to go from that idea of what they need to launching a new product. Corporate business priorities are actually startups growth opportunities. So startups are really agile. Um, they can move quickly, they can innovate, and they can be successful if they have the right resources. And a lot of those resources, the corporations have easily. Um, and so on the corporate side of things, they successfully engage with startups for them, it's about right, knowing the right players. There's a lot of startups, there's a lot going on in the ecosystem. As I said, a lot of them are gonna fail, so they, it takes them time and resources to identify who those winners are and to establish trusting relationships and, and to develop those insights within the startups of what they're doing. And this is a natural strength that Techstars has. You know, this is what we do day in and day out, and so we can provide that value to the corporations really easily. My third um, principle I see in nature is the benefit of each partner is something that they can readily provide, and, provide and, and they would provide this activity whether they're in partnership or not. Uh, an example I love here is mangroves, which are a really, really incredible um, organism. And so they live on shorelines, and what they do, they protect um, from hurricane storms and winds, which we know is something that's happening more and more all around the world. Um, whether it's waves, floods, they can prevent erosion um, by stabilizing the sediments in, with their root system. They also maintain water quality and clarity. They filter pollutants naturally by trapping sediments um, that are coming from the land. And then they serve as a valuable nursery area for fish and different um, invertebrates. And all these benefits they're doing they're, that's just what they naturally do. They'd be doing this anyway, whether they're a nursery or not. Um, they, they just work in these incredible partnerships because that's what they've been bred to do and, and, and are really good at. And Techstars, again, there's a lot of examples of this, but I think our accelerator partnerships is a great one. So one of our partnerships is Alexa. Um, and Alexa knows voice technology. That's what they do. Uh, they have deep expertise there. They know the ins and outs of it when it comes to the subject matter of voice technology. 
Techstars is an expert on supporting tech startups of all kinds. And so they'd be supporting tech startups in this kind of voice technology sector anyway. But when they come together with Alexa, they help Alexa diversify their product offerings and, and Techstars gets to widen their network into the Alexa network, growing their network even more. So it's a really mutual benefit there. And then the last part I wanna um, talk about is how partners respond and adapt to each other in changing context. As we know, everything's always, always changing. So in nature, um, organisms do this over time as well as can do it more rapidly, but over time it's called co-adaptation. And so um, a great example is hummingbirds. Uh, they've really actually adapted to have these long beaks to extract the pollen from certain flowers. And the pollen adapted to appeal to the hummingbird's nutritional needs. So over time, they both kind of morphed to work together in this partnership. Um, one interesting point though is this is, can actually go the opposite direction um, and it can lead to co-extinction. -ex so in southern England, there's a, there was a large blue butterfly that adapted to eat red ants because they were readily available. But then humans killed the habitats of red ants and then these large beautiful butterflies ended up going extinct. So you have to kind of be careful um, how the connection between the adapt adaptation is and not relying fully on it and kind of thinking it in a broader networked ecosystem way. Um, and in Techstars, this is, you know, we're really a platform for perpetual innovation and we can try to conti uh, create continuous cycles of engagement. So between and among the network, creating new products that arise as we see the needs, like the kind of last corporate innovation partners um, programs I mentioned, those are all really need the, uh, new. The ecosystem development one, brand new, because we saw there's all these, you know, we're, we're doing this partnership with Buffalo, New York. They were like, listen, we want more startups. You're really good at this. And we're like, oh, great, we are. Let's work together. And so we're kind of adapting based on what the network needs and what the community needs. Um, and, and, and what we see there, it's, it's reinforcing. Anything we do is making the network stronger. And so we're, we're providing people services and building our network, which is one of the main values that we add. Um, so it's all reinforcing one another. And, and there's countless more examples, I'd, I'd say, in nature and in tech stars around you know, what it looks like to create successful partnerships. And all these can be um, applied to business. And so um, I kind of want to take those examples and then talk a little bit more about the specific partnership I work on because it's, it's a concrete example of a, a really neat um, a collaboration between two seemingly different, different organizations. Um, so yeah, I am the program director at the Techstar Sustainability Accelerator in partnership with the Nature Conservancy, which is our full name and very long to say every time I say it. <laughs> um, and I feel really grateful to have a, a role in which it gets to combine two of my passions in one. And just in case you're not aware, the Nature Conservancy is an amazing organization and actually a really great example of a nonprofit that has successfully created so many partnerships and created a whole ecosystem themselves um, that's been really successful. So they operate in over 70 countries around the world. They have 4,000 employees. 400 of those are leading scientists. Uh, they have an operating annual budget of over $750 million. And for more than 65 years, TNC has protected our world's greatest places and our precious biodiversity. And now we're learning that you know, through science, that people in nature actually share many of the same challenges and that investments in nature are essentially creating economic opportunities and solving a lot of our human development challenges. And so by solving these top threats to nature, the Nature Conservancy is also improving the lives of millions of people. And, you know, they look to their priorities are aligned with the priorities of the accelerator. So protecting land and water, tackling climate change, providing food and water sustainability, building cities, and connecting people in nature. Those are the uh, sectors that we looked in to source startups for them, to find um, early stage companies that are doing work in these sectors that can scale and, and reinforce what they're doing in the world. And the Nature Conservancy works with universities, nonprofits, corporate partnerships, 
indigenous community, communities, policy workers, um, local land trusts, and local communities around the world. And so they chose to partner with us because technology is not their forte. Um, they know it's one piece of the many pieces in solving the climate puzzle, but and they know that they have to be innovative to keep up and move quickly, but they don't know how to do that. So together, what they did was they raised money from aligned impact investors, including Zoma Capital, Lida Hill, Jeremy Hanelor Environmental Trust, um, combined with Texars and the Nature Conservancy to create this program. And what makes it so successful in, in all of our programs is they get all the resources I talked about around Texars, plus all the resources of the Nature Conservancy. So essentially the startup that was kind of on its own, you know, maybe probably working from home, um, had some friends maybe that CEOs, uh, read some blogs, whatever. Um, they now have so many people behind them saying, yes, you can do this, yes, I will help you. And that's what makes it so powerful. Um, and uh, just to, to give an example, Lodic Labs is the name of a company we worked with in, two, uh, in last year, 2018. And what they do, they came into the program doing one thing and they left doing something a little slightly different, which is pretty common for accelerators. So they came in helping big industry quantify and mitigate the impact of water-related risks to their operations and financial performance. They talked to all these mentors, I mean hundreds of mentors, they got feedback, they talked to the Nature Conservancy, and then they left the program as a platform that provides data and analytics and modeling tools to, um, to allow people to work with water investment. So essentially they look at an area of land and they can say, do you want to invest in green infrastructure, like riparian buffer strips and forests and mangroves, or do you want to invest in gray infrastructure, like a traditional clean water plant? Um, and um, because of this program, they successfully completed a pilot with the Nature Conservancy in Latin America, um, and they're in discussions now to explain, expand their work across the Columbia region and other ge uh, geographies. And what they're doing essentially can lead to more investments in our natural ecosystems that'll provide all of us with clean water and many other outcomes, including a financial return, um, improved air quality, and, and quality of life for local communities. This is just one example, but six out of our 10 uh, startups that we worked with ended up with some sort of partnership with the Nature Conservancy, and many are still working um, together with them over a year later. Um, and, the, and the one separate ecosystems of the Nature Conservancy and Techstars now overlap and, and provide lots of mutual benefit to one another. So there's a lot of examples of startups that went through other Techstars programs, like Techstars Seattle had this company called Drone Seed that is a drone that essentially plants trees. Um, and it, so it didn't go through our program, but now they're still wor they're working with the Nature Conservancy because they're part of our network. TNC is part of our network, and part of what we're always doing is saying, who needs to connect with who? How can we make these connections? Where are the mutual benefit here? So in conclusion, um, Trees do not oper operate on the survival of uh, the fittest principle, and, and neither does Techstars. A tree is only as strong as its network that surrounds it, and a network uh, is, is only as strong as the forest that surrounds it, and a network is only as strong as the others in it. And building these networks and communities, they're not zero-sum games. The well-being of trees depends on the trees around it, just like the well-being of the strength of our network depends on the other people and the integrity of the people in their community. And that's why we have focused so much and we encourage all of our startups to focus on investing in relationships. At the core of this, it's always putting the entrepreneur first and how we can provide resources for that entrepreneur. We really value our network over hierarchy at all costs and we know that together we're stronger together. And one of our values that has helped us get through this is making sure that we're always giving first and giving back to the community. So in nature, you see these partnerships everywhere, um, and there's a lot of other lessons. And in fact, there's actually a whole field called biomimicry where you can look at what nature does and build technologies on it. Um, but I encourage you this weekend uh, to go out in nature and just see what you can learn. 
see how you can apply things to what you're doing in the world, and then go back and share these with your network and the relationships in your ecosystem and, and be stronger together. So thank you guys all, and I'd love to take questions if you have any. One of the things that I take away from this, it's been interesting over and over during the conference, we've heard people talk about the relationships, the partnerships, that our, or, our organizations have, our organizations themselves as being living systems. And Hannah just showed us exactly how <laughs> living, made the absolute connection between living systems and our organizations. So thank you yeah. for bringing that home. We've got questions all over the place. Great. So um, we heard a really interesting presentation yesterday from Stephanie Gripney about impact investing. Sure which just leads me to ask you this question, because I know in a lot of cases, the stereotype of a tech investment is ideally a cloud software firm because there's very relatively little capital required and an ability to scale up quickly and generate fabulous unicorn type returns. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what different dynamic do you see with the kinds of companies that you'd be investing in sure. with the Nature Conservancy? Yeah, there can be a lot of different dynamics of, of what we see. A few examples are often who they're selling to can look a little bit different. So a lot of our start startups sell to utilities, municipalities, governments, um, and traditional investors will see that and run, run far away because there's typically long and hard sales cycles there. It's not a quick, you know, software as a service platform that you can generate online and through traditional you know, drip, your, uh, drip um, email campaigns or anything like that. It's, it's hard, it's all about relationships. Um, but that is where we need to focus when it comes to climate is also uh, towards these utilities, whether it's you know, water or energy or, or others. Um, so that's one difference. I'd say another difference uh, along those lines, we, we have probably more hardware companies um, hardware software components. So another example of a company we took last year is a robot that goes in pipes and it can detect leaks in city pipes up to an inch um, while mapping the city pipes with GPS, uh, which is something <laughs> right now you probably have had an experience where you're trying to go somewhere and the road is all dug up because they're digging around and trying to figure out where the pipe is and because it burst and so they prevent those problems. Um, but yeah, we look at a lot more kind of hardware type companies. And, and, uh, and then lastly, with all that, the return, there, sometimes it takes some more patient capital because it's not this quick, build it, grow it, sell it, let's be a unicorn, it, it takes time. I mean, you think about investing in trees, you can't speed up photosynthesis. It's just, it just is what it is. I mean, I'm sure someone will figure it out at some point, but um, <laughs> right now. Uh, and so you have to kind of look at different time horizons and be more patient with your capital sometimes. Sometimes they can run the same as a traditional company though. Hannah, loved your passion for nature and ecosystem, so appreciate that. Yeah. Um, question on a different level. I did some research and I was just, enthralled with the amount of accelerators there are globally, also in the United States. Yeah. So do you have any strategies about keeping up with competition or, you know, is that just growing your ecosystem to all these other partnerships, whether they're the Halcyon in DC or the other, you know, mm -hmm. the other kind of uh, accelerators are out there? Yeah, I'd say a few things. One, you know, Halcyon is, is a cool example of how we can work together. So we had a company last year that went through the Halcyon program. And so it was a great kind of feeder into our program. So for some of them, it's actually deal flow for us. Um, for others, we, we, what we try to do is do what we do really well and explain it well and say, please make the best decision for you. So we're very clear on who we are and what we do and how we operate. And so if we're looking at a, a comp you know, competitor, we're often say, great, we're not, we're different this is how we are, this is how they are, you need to make the decision that's best for your company. Um, I worry a lot because there are so many accelerators and for us, Founders First is the most important thing. And there's accelerators out there that they'll take 8% equity from a company and they don't provide that value there's, um, because there's thousands of them. And so I worry on behalf of the founders that they're not gonna be able to kind of tell 
where they can get the value they need and where they can't. Um, so we try to just be clear about what we do. And I really enjoyed your presentation. It was great. Um, and I apologize if I missed it in your in your presentation, but what's uh, your typical uh, acceptance rate? I know for most uh, between one and three percent. What what is your acceptance rate? Um, it is it's something like that, um, probably around one two percent. I think they they I have heard the quote that we're harder to get into than Harvard. Um. <laughs> and about how many applications do you get a year annually? We actually uh, we don't. Rep rep uh, share that number and it's kind of different because we run 44 programs and each program you know our program I don't know the other programs so I guess we get a little bit less applications because we're very focused on a certain type of company where a Boulder accelerator program they'll take anything in technology from you know the last class they had a technology candle company and a wheelchair company as well as a securities company so kind of depends on the program Thanks, it was great. Um, could you comment in the Techstars way of doing things, do you distinguish between monetized and non-monetized cooperation? And whether you do or not, could you comment mm -hmm. on, on that? Yeah, I think an a, a interesting example of that is um, are all of those kind of startup programs I talked about at the beginning. Those are really not as much monetized programs. They're community-led. You know, we try to get costs covered, but that involves the community members going out and get sponsors. Um, so that's our way of making sure, because we talk about how can we support from idea to IPO. And so these really early stages, we know it's important to be building the ecosystem for our later stages. And so we try to kind of give back to, by providing all of these free events. Um, and then on the monetized side, um, I mean, I think we're pretty upfront around how that all works. One thing, you know, we're really transparent. We don't try to kind of pretend something's not monetized when it's not. Um, but what's helped us through distinguishing those is our one main value that we come back to no matter what is founders first. So if there's ever a conflict of, oh, but this corporation is paying for this thing, but it's not in the best interest of founders, those corporations know every time we side with the founders. It's just so, it, it makes my job really easy, whether it's investors, mentors, anything, it's always founders first, and so we can go back to that if there's ever like, oh, what do we do in this situation, and it's, it makes it super easy. Hi, um, I'm from San Antonio, Texas, and we're building our tech presence, and we're also writing uh, a climate action plan. Ooh. So selfishly, how do we get tech stars and how do, what, do you, what are your criteria for expanding to new communities? Um, I think it, it, it's all about partnerships. It's connecting with the right people that are um, kind of values aligned and how they operate and that's our give first principle and really um, kind of authentic people and then starting the conversation. So I'd be happy to talk to you about that. And, and see who within your community and our community could, could chat. We probably have time for one more question. Okay. Ah, here we go. I knew we'd have one from you. <laughs> Hi, Hannah. Great presentation. Good to see the update on where you're at. For companies trying to address environmental concerns or new standards, how do government regulations or the paradigm of requirements upon businesses play into your business model mm -hmm. assessments? Uh, in essence, I'm familiar with many scientists or people who come up with an idea of, we can do this. Yeah. And then folks more from an uh, investor side look at it as, yes, but no one will buy that. Yeah. Just because you can do it, there's not a market. How does that come into your world? Yeah, it's, it can be a huge problem and, and you know, why a lot of our environmental challenges are in the state they're, they're in and they're not getting focused on. Um, it's definitely something we take into consideration and that's where working with TNC has been really helpful because th they do a lot around policy as well as science and they kind of understand where we're at and where we're going because they're really involved. So a company we're looking at for our 2019 you know, program, for example, is working in the 
water regulation space starting in California, and we're like, yeah, this is going to become more and more of a, re uh, of a regulated market from a government side, and we're seeing how that is going to make a better investment. It adds additional risk when you think about it, because their you know, regulations are changing and slow. Um, but it's a really, I, I, they're a really important piece of the puzzle. Um, it's not where Techstars focuses, but luckily TNC puts a lot of their energy in helping get in some of those regulations passed. So we can kind of work together there. Okay. Hannah, this was really Thank fascinating. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Is it, is it okay for me to say that I'm jealous because you have a very cool job? Yeah. <laughs> you agree. have a very cool Thank job making all. a difference in the world.